this is a very special period we've entered into since yesterday. It's the period of divine energy or the mother goddess we say. This period is called Navratri. This period is dedicated to the divine mother, the feminine goddess. That which is behind all forms, all manifestation. So in India, these nine days and nine nights, we immerse ourselves into this divine Shakti energy. We pray to her, we fast for her, we do enormous rituals for her to please her and we also celebrate her. So in India, this, these nine days are also times of celebration because Goddess brings the element of celebrativeness into life. There is a beautiful mythological story behind why we celebrate these, this, this festival of nine days or nine nights. This big, the festival began yesterday, being the new moon day. Before that was the dark night, day before, yesterday was the new moon. So it's a beginning of a cycle of a moon. So for nine days in a year, we celebrate this festival. There are two stories in India. You know, we love stories in India. I'm sure in other cultures also. But here, behind everything, there is a profound story. And we keep reminding ourselves of the story so that we keep in the remembrance of the profundity of the period or the energy in which we can immerse. So in the northern India, we celebrate this festival for Rama, Lord Rama. The story goes that a demon king, Ravana, abducted Lord Rama's wife, Sita. And these nine days he fought, he fought with Ravana, the demon king, to release, to get Sita released from his captivity. So the fight goes on for nine days and in the tenth day, Lord Rama kills Ravana. He wins the war. So we celebrate nine days because it's a, it's a indication or it's a reminder of triumph of good over evil always. In the eastern part of India, we celebrate this festival as Durga Puja. And there the story, we have another story for that. There was a demon king called Mahishasura. It's an interesting story and in a way both these stories are also linked. So there was this demon king called Mahishasura. At one point, this demon king Mahishasura, this Asura, this demon, was an ardent devotee of Shiva. He did a lot of uh, puja, tapasya to please Shiva. And when Shiva was pleased, Shiva offered or showered a lot of boons on this, on this demon. As we have all experienced, as we all see in life, when we are given enormous power, we don't know how to handle it. It goes into the head. The same thing happened to Mahishasura. This enormous power, these boons that Shiva gave him, the power went into his head. And he started destroying life on earth. He started killing innocent people. He started uh, making them slave, uh, doing all kinds of evil things to people. Now, because this, this demon, Mahishasura, is been blessed by Shiva, and Shiva is very powerful Indian god, to counter this, a bigger energy had to be created. Because it's like Shiva had blessed this demon with, in a way, all his powers also. So, to counter Mahishasura, bigger energy, bigger Shakti, bigger power was needed. So the three main gods of India, the god of creation, which is Brahma, the god of maintenance, which is Vishnu, 
and the god of destruction which is Shiva all the three gods came together all of them poured their energies and created a manifestation created a Shakti form that Shakti form is called Durga the mother goddess so they had to create a feminine Shakti god to counter Mahishasura and then Durga the goddess Durga goes to Mahishasura and the fight happens for nine days and on the tenth day she is victorious she killed Mahishasura two very important points there why the three gods had to create the Shakti a combined force in the form of feminine goddess to counter Mahishasura yeah something to think about in my view they created the Shakti because Shakti is untainable she's wild she's ferocious she's also motherly but she's she's a bigger force than anything that anybody has witnessed in on earth so it was an obvious choice and decision that the energy of the three only one being can hold the energy of the three lords and that's Shakti that's Divine Mother so in a way we are saying that the feminine goddess is so powerful that she can hold in her the power the Shakti the energy of all the three gods put together there was no other person being a god who could have held that energy that enormous profound energy hence Durga yeah so that's that's one beautiful thing that I take from this story the other is that why every Mahishasura every every person who gets enormous power gets corrupted look at the humanity the state of humanity today what's going on including our own selves huh? when I say look at the humanity it's not that you're only looking at so-called evil people or politicians etc no 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 look at your own selves we are given a great boon a great uh, blessing by the existence when we take the human birth it's a great blessing it's like the divine pours in a lot of power lot of profound energy lot of Shakti into this form but what happens when we take birth we are we not able to handle this profound energy called human beingness and we put this energy into all kinds of destructive things we kill nature we destroy nature we 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 poison earth for the sake of our ambition because we we do all kinds of nonsense on this on this earth because we become the mahishasura who is not able to handle the blessing we hurt each other we kill each other sometime in the name of religion sometime in the name of politics or there are thousands of other names also for our profound violence if we are not able to do this violence through action we do this violence through through thoughts through words even in the closest relationships we we keep hurting people isn't it so the power has been given to us to be more loving and compassionate that's the power which has been blessed to humanity but we become Mahishasura or we become Ravana in the earlier story of Lord Rama that we are not able to handle this power in fact in the other story of Lord Rama and Ravana something similar happened Ravana was also a, a great devotee of Lord Shiva he too attained a lot of powers lot of blessings lot of Siddhis lot of uh, what is Siddhi for Hindi for English uh, boons let's say powers even Ravana could not handle it <laughs> even the the blessings of of Shiva to Ravana goes into Ravana's head that's the reason 
he become ten headed one if you look at the image of ravana he's got ten heads there are multiple ways to look at it one way to look at it is that the blessings of the lord shiva went into ravana's head instead of going into ravana's heart he developed ten heads <laughs> such an enormous ego and then in that when you're not able to handle energy it goes into the negative domain it goes into the evil yeah now but even in the northern india we celebrate navaratri though it's the festival of of rama and ravana the fight between king rama lord rama and demon ravana but we still celebrate this as a festival of devi goddess yeah why again there is a beautiful reason for that because it is said that when ravana was doing all the things that he did and when rama decided to finally encounter or 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 engage in a fight with ravana lord vishnu who is the lord of creation also in some senses he suggested rama that rama you are going to enter into a fire sea battle with this very powerful ravana who has been blessed by many powers by lord shiva you are going to you are going to a war with this enormously powerful demon ravana do not go alone rama invoke the goddess within your own self because unless the goddess shakti is with you you will not be able to win this war this is what vishnu is telling rama and then the story goes that La- rama goes to uh, a durga temple mother durga temple and prays to her that bless me mother bless me with all that is needed for me to win this war the war between the good and the evil the war between the head and the heart the war between the right and the wrong the war between the light and the darkness with that he prayed to mother durga got her blessing then went to the war so what do i take out from that story also is that he who and rama the king the lord the bhagwan rama cannot win the war with ravana without the blessing of mother durga there is a profound intelligence there is a profound insight into that yeah 